Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudey. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today I'm going to talk to you about the effect of the oral contraceptive pill in IVF. So in many protocols, the contraceptive pill, or in some cases, estrogen in the form of Proginova, is often used for two reasons. One is to synchronize follicles so that follicles form in, in one line so that they can be stimulated at the same time and stimulated in a more synchronized manner or for programming so that you can do batching or collect a certain number of egg collections at a certain time of the week. So let's look at this paper which looked at the effect of type of oral contraceptive pill and the duration of use on fresh and cumulative live birth rates and was published in Human Reproduction. So what are the proposed causes and the proposed causes of a decline in results may have been that the progesterone component may affect the endometrial receptivity. The longer washout period may be required and in fact, what we know is that the entire process is reversed within five days induced by the contraceptive pill. And again, there were inconsistencies in treatment and a type of progesterone. Now, the contraceptive pill, as I said, has been effective for many two reasons. One is for treatment planning and avoiding a weakened overload and also to a certain extent in synchronizing follicles. Now, if you have a look at the multiple papers which have come out, Cochrane came out in 2017 and said that the pill significantly reduces live birth rates in a meta-analysis. Again, there were papers that came out and said that there were lower ongoing pregnancy rates and lower pregnancy rates in PCOS patients. But also there were papers that came out clarifying that there was no difference in live birth rates when you use the pill. And this has led to repeated controversies which have gone on. So let's have a look at this paper. 18 to 45 years, again, Antigonus cycle. The pill was given for about 3,517 patients and there was no pill for 599 patients. A total 12 to 13 day period of pretreatment, as we call it, and there was a five days washout. Now, the two types which were used was ethanol estradiol and a third generation and a fourth generation progesterone. Outcome measures was looked at from a fresh live birth rate and cumulative pregnancy rates, which looked at fresh as well as a frozen cycle. Again, there was a mixture of recombinant FSH being used and HMG being used. So let's have a look at the results. And when you look at the results, the total dose seemed to be slightly higher with the pill. Oocyte retreat were the same. Metaphase 2 oocytes were very much the same. If you have a look at the clinical pregnancy rates, very similar. Live birth rates in a fresh cycle, very similar and cumulative live birth rates, which took into consideration a frozen cycle, were also very similar. So in fact, this is one of the first studies which looked at the different duration of, of the pill, as well as the type of progesterone given, or the type of the pill given, and looked at the live birth rates. And the results here indicated that the pill does not affect the clinical pregnancy rates or live birth rates or the cumulative live birth rates irrespective of the type and the duration of administration. And this was till 30 days. In an earlier study, it showed a decrease in ongoing pregnancy, increased duration of stimulation and increase in the total gonadotrophins to those not receiving the pill. And in fact, what this study also suggests is that if you were to give the pill, then 
there was a slightly longer duration of treatment and those patients also consumed slightly more gonadotrophins. Again, there was no difference in clinical pregnancy rates and live birth rates. And also what you cannot exclude was that certain OC pills with a different progesterone may have a more negative impact on pregnancy rates. Now, if we believe that why did this concept come up of having a negative impact and what could be the proposed mechanisms and you know how do we counter them? And so it was believed that the progesterone in the OC pill may affect endometrial receptivity. And again, they've looked at microaero technology and they've really not seen that the OC pill really changes the endometrial receptivity uh, and that data is still very limited. There's another mechanism which has been proposed that inhibition of the endogenous gonadotrophins has a negative feedback and maybe you, you, when you give the pill you're, you're going to reduce the FSH and the LH before you start stimulation. So those the chronic decline in LH may have a negative impact and maybe by adding HMG you could reverse it. Thus in this group the OC pill and the non-OC pill there was no effect on LH activity and live birth rates. Again there is some evidence that the synthetic progesterones can suppress endogenous FSH secretion. Again in this study it did not seem so. If you have to look at the duration of OC pill treatment and the previous studies range from 12 days to three consecutive cycles and if you give it for three consecutive cycles and that study showed a slight decrease in the number of oocytes. So if you have a look at women who have been on the pill for a long time their AMH declines and also stimulation takes longer and number of oocytes obtained generally is less. So we often say if you've been on the pill for a long time, wait and see if the AMH recovers. And that's how I would do it personally. And in this study, we, they also demonstrated that if you continued the OC pill for a, about 30 days, it did not decrease live birth rates. There is some evidence that once you give it for around 20 to 25 days, that prolonged suppression of endogenous granulotrophin may reduce live birth rates. But again, if you have a look at it, there was a freeze-all protocol also in these cases to add to some of the cycles. And it again showed that giving the pill did not affect the quality of oocytes and the live birth rate was very similar. So in conclusion, we would say we cannot exclude that the longer duration of administration and a different type of OC pill or a shorter pill free interval may have a detrimental effect on live birth rates. And if you were to give it for an interval of 12 to 30 days, and in this paper said a washout period, it may increase the total dose of gonadotrophins, but does not seem to affect live birth rates and cumulative live birth rates. Now, in my practice, I tend to use sometimes Proganova and the uh, reason is that I use it for mainly to synchronize follicles. If I've seen follicles at different uh, sizes and sometimes you don't need it and it's very much as, as a synchronization but also it is quite effective in programming. So if you're doing batching of, of egg collections or you want to have specific days of egg collection which happens in some places, giving pretreatment is helpful and in fact will help you to run the cycle much better. Thank you very much. If you do like these talks, to share them. And see you next time. Bye.